Okay, so welcome to the handwriting coaching discussion. So, um, my name is Robin and I am a calligraphy teacher and handwriting coach. So a lot of times when people hear a handwriting coach, I'm like, you're a what? <laughs> what is that? And what happens is people, um, they don't realize, especially people who don't have kids in primary school at them or in high school even, they don't realize that there's such an issue with handwriting that I literally work full-time as a calligraphy teacher and a handwriting coach. So the problems of handwriting are, sure, they are so varied and there's so many issues. And I feel like with a lot of people, they, especially older people, when I say older people, like um, people sort of, I would say from about late thirties up and, and <laughs> older as in not people who've just finished school, we all kind of went to school when handwriting was actually taught. So here's your pen, here's how you hold, and you wrote out rows and rows of letters, and we did proper, it wasn't a subject as such, but we kind of taught properly how to do um, handwriting. And what's happened nowadays is kids are not really taught that. It's more a case of these are the letters, here's the pen, and you sort of need to get on with it. I also feel like often what happens is um, kids are left to just get on with it and they're not taught how to hold the pen properly. They're not taught how to do the letter formation properly. <clears throat> they're kind of just expected to somehow get it and, and it doesn't happen like that. And what happens with, with um, these kids is because they're left to their own devices, they literally will work out their own ways to hold the pen, hold the crayon when they're little, um, then it's a pencil, then it's a pen. And without some kind of, of help, a lot of them develop bad habits. And by about grade four, all the issues have got so bad that we now then have a problem. And then I get all the messages. Usually it's around about April, May of every year. And then all the messages start. It's like my child's in grade four. The writing's gone out the window. I don't know what's going on. Suddenly there's a problem. Uh, my child's very intelligent. Always make sure I know that. <laughs> so, but they can't write. It's like, okay, so first of all, if they don't tell me what grade they're in, I normally know it's going to be about grade four. <coughs> First of all, I ask them what grade is it? Usually it's grade four. And the reason why is because the workload seems to increase quite a lot from grade one to grade two to grade three. It's it's what I think that's the foundation phase. And then um, I'm not a qualified teacher, so I'm not sure of all the terms, but by grade four, the workload increases. And then all of a sudden what happens is there's all this pressure in terms of the workload and all the issues um, that the hand actually had in grade one, two, and three, and before that, all of a sudden there's pressure on the hand and all of those issues come out. Everybody suddenly thinks that there's a problem. You know, there's actually been a problem all along and um, nobody's realized it, but by grade four, it's a disaster. If a child doesn't come to me for handwriting coaching by grade four, normally by about grade five or six, it's really starting to become a problem. Um, I often get high school kids where they're losing marks. They are, um, some of them are just about, you know, failing. Um, they've been told they can't do their, write their exams written. They have to do it orally. And it, it's become such a, almost like an epidemic. And um, so why I'm doing this session is to explain how simple it actually is to fix it. And also, how do you know if you have a problem? Because some people are like, oh no, my child's fine, they can write and their writing's neat. And then I see the child writing, and I think, yeah, but you're gonna have problems later because of the way their child's holding the, the pen. <coughs> so most of the people I work with are kids. Um, I do work with any ages, but to get an adult to actually come for a handwriting class, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. A lot of times with adults, it's like, oh no, it's too late for me. And I think with adults, we, we get in our comfort zones. It's like, oh, my writing's terrible, no one can read it, but it's fine. And I have had adults who come to me and it's a case of I'm actually embarrassed by my writing and I really want to do something about it. So at that point, um, yeah, it's actually quite an easy fix because normally with an adult or, or an older child, um, a high school child, they have struggled so much that they're at a point where it's like, okay, I really need to fix this. Whereas with a younger child, often it's a case of, oh, you know, my teacher's complaining, my mom's complaining, I don't see a problem, but I have to come and um, do this handwriting. <laughs> so I try and make the sessions fun, but um, I find with the, the younger kids or sort of primary school kids, often they 
they don't really understand what the big deal is. So I'm going to go through um, some of the, the reasons why handwriting is important and why proper handwriting is important. And then I'm just going to go through the correct pen grip, body grip, our, our body position, paper angle, all of those things. I'll move the camera on and you can see that now. And then I'm going to show you some incorrect pen grip so that if you look at your child or yourself, or it's a kid who's watching this, I mean, this session is for anyone, and you look down at your hand and you see, mm, okay, actually, maybe I do need some help. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you don't realize. Um, my kids are both grown up and I started doing handwriting coaching probably about five years ago. And my, son, my younger son was in matric when I started, and I did not realize that he actually had problems all the way through school related to handwriting. And I've been um, on and off over the years, I've done calligraphy, you know, I've taught on and off. For many years, I had um, a real job <laughs> where I got, got dressed and actually went to work and sat in an office. And, you know, when you're busy like that, you don't notice what's going on with your kids. You, you don't even realize there's an issue. So many parents will say to me, oh, I never even realized. And then there's that guilt of feeling like, but I should have known. I like, no, I, um, I have what's known as the perfect tripod grip. I hold perfectly, not because I'm so amazing, but because I was taught properly. Um, and so did my son. So Luke, my younger son, has actually got the perfect grip. So if I had to look at him, I would think, well, there's no problem. His issue was that he gripped so tightly that he literally couldn't move the, the hand comfortably. So I'm going to go through that as well. But there's an example of where I would have looked at him and thought, okay, I don't see the problem. Maybe he's not listening. Maybe he hates school for other reasons. But actually, when I look back at his reports, all his issues started in grade four. Um, he hated school. He could never keep up properly in terms of, of just, you know, writing just notes and all of that was an issue. His comprehension was terrible because by the time he's read the question and, and started writing, it's like, you know, <laughs> he's running out of time in the exams. So there were so many issues relating to him not actually being able to write correctly. And, and all it really was was just overly tight grip, such a simple fix. And it's something that I'm able to fix usually in the first lesson. So a one hour session and his entire school career would have been different. So you want to talk about parental guilt? I know what that feels like. So, and that's not something that I fail that as a parent. It's just something that was absolutely not even, you know, I never even thought about it. So, so take it from me, you not, it's not another one of those things that parents are just supposed to know. And teachers as well. A lot of times I'll have teachers coming to do calligraphy classes with me or we just get chatting. And they don't actually realize just how bad it is and, and just what an issue it is when you are gripping too tightly. So um, it seems to be something that's not really focused on anymore. And certainly from what, I've, what I gather in um, teachers training college, it's not something that's focused on at all anymore. You know, way back, the teachers were taught how to write on the board and how to do all sorts of things. But apparently, it's handwriting in terms of how you teach it to a child is not really something that's that's in the curriculum. We're certainly not in South Africa. And from what I've gathered from um, chatting to teachers from around the world, it's something that is um, actually quite a problem, you know, everywhere. And when I say um, an epidemic, it is, it almost is like that. And, you know, when I start researching about handwriting and that, I see that word epidemic a lot. And people often will say to me, but I don't understand what the big deal is because we're all going to work on, on um, keyboards. We all, all the kids are working on, you know, they're, they're on their iPads, they're on their laptops all the time. So what is the big deal about writing? Like, why do we even need to bother? So writing is a basic skill, okay? You still have to get your kid from grade one all the way through to matric. And a lot of times they will go into varsity and they still write. So I've had students come to me, varsity students coming for handwriting coaching. The one guy was doing his, um, his honors. He was first year, two years, I think of honors. He was doing accounting. He was going to become an accountant and he said as soon as i'm qualified i'm not writing anymore i'm going to be on a keyboard all the time but he said for my um my uh, actual varsity my lectures and he said i have to write and he was writing in cursive and his grip was so tight it was becoming um, a real problem so there's someone who's oh, like you know i think he was about 19 or 20 still having issues with handwriting and still needing to write even though he's going into a career where he probably is going to spend most of his time on a keyboard so um, let me go into the reasons why it's so important. So, okay, so my background is um, calligraphy teacher. I'm not a qualified school teacher. Um, 
why, where I started seeing issues with handwriting is I would have people coming to me for calligraphy classes and a calligraphy pen you would use uh, calligraphy um, writing you'd use a pen with a flat nib like this a um, fountain pen or you could use a marker but you have to hold it correctly those pens only work if you hold the pen correctly when you're trying to hold a pen like this and I'd have students adults coming to me holding like this or gripping so tightly that these pens didn't um, didn't work and that's how I started getting into handwriting coaching is because I needed to very quickly with someone sitting opposite and look at the way they're writing and quickly come up with a way for them to write um, correctly and, and easily and for these pens to work. So often what would happen is as a result of that, people would say, oh, wow, my normal handwriting's improved so much. Can you maybe help my kids? Because my child's, you know, grade four <laughs> or grade five and they're having issues or they're getting cramps, lots of tiredness, lots of cramps. So it kind of got to a point, it's like, well, bring them, let me see if we can sort something out. And from that, this whole handwriting coaching thing became something that I now do um, pretty much half my, my working life is, is doing this. Um, when I started doing it, I also thought like, is this actually a thing? And I started looking around the world at what people are doing, who is actually, um, you know, is there anyone doing this? So there's no one in South Africa, and I'm not talking about occupational therapists, that's something totally different. So the OTs, um, a lot of kids are sent for OT for handwriting, totally different to what I'm doing. Um, there's, I think, one person in India, there's about two or three in America, and someone in the UK, and I think maybe someone in Australia. Very, very few people who are focusing only on handwriting. So I'm now at a point where I feel like I'm an expert in this. I've seen just about every weird grip, every weird you know, way of holding the pencil, the pen. Um, so I'm going to go through that now, show you the correct grip and show you the incorrect grips and why those grips are a problem, why it's so important to have the correct grip. Because a lot of times with kids, they'll come to me for a class or a lesson and then you know, you can see they're thinking like, oh, really, is another thing I have to go and fix, another thing that's wrong with me. And once explained to them how important it is to, to hold correctly and why it's so much better, then it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So what happens when they're not holding correctly is their confidence is affected. Often they will lose marks. I've had a lot of high school kids and varsity kids coming to me and they lose marks. Teachers will literally take the paper back. I can't read this. In, in um, university, they will often just put naught, hand it back and say, redo it. They don't even bother trying. With primary school kids, the teachers will still sit there and they'll try and work out what, you know, <laughs> those are all wearing glasses trying to work out what on earth is going on on the page. Kids will often say to me, and primary school kids will often say, oh, but my teacher can read my writing. They know what's written on the arc. Yeah, that's fine until you get to matric and you've got a totally different teacher reading your writing. So they're not going to sit there and try and work out, is that an A? Is it a U? They're just going to either mark you down or just they'll be irritated before they even start so that's what you're trying to avoid um the other thing with kids often is they hate school they absolutely hate school because learning is not fun when you've got permanent cramps permanent pain and everything's just sore and you've got pain so depending on what the grip issue is the pain will be in different areas of the hand so i'll tell you that now but um, what I'm first going to do is I'm just moving this laptop a bit. What I'm going to do is move the, um, my camera down. I'm going to show you what the correct and incorrect um, way of sitting is. So a lot of times kids will come to me and, um, and I say kids because most of the time with adults, we are still, we were still taught correctly as in we taught to hold our book um, at an angle like this, okay? So what is happening now in the schools is a lot of times kids are not taught to do that. And I'm working as a right-handed person. Left-handed kids should be, or person, adult should be writing this way. There shouldn't be any difference between um, left or right. So it should be like a mirror image. And this thing of kids writing this way, it's absolutely not necessary. Or writing sideways. They should turn their book and the pen should be underneath and you should be writing like that. So that's as a left-handed person. So for a right-handed person, just move this slightly more. Okay, so the best way to be sitting, here's my body, here's my table. What you are looking for is for your book to be turned. So I'm going to use um, this pen just to, to demo. And when you look at the way that I'm writing, here's the middle of my body, there's my table. I'm sitting up straight, so obviously 
sitting up straight, important, shoulders here. I get kids coming in like this and like this. And <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And they slouch all over the place. That is definitely not going to help. Okay, so sitting up straight, not ridiculously straight, just core. And I find also often with especially younger kids, small kids, they're too short, they're too low at the table. So if you've got a child who's sitting at home trying to do homework, and they're at an adult sized dining room table and um, chair, just put a cushion under them so that they're sitting comfortably. The next thing you're looking for, your paper needs to be turned, you're wanting this triangle over here. Okay, so if you look at um, where, if I'm just turning this slightly here, here is my body, here is my um, arm, and here is my, my table and my book. So that if you're looking, and I'm purposely wearing dark so you, so you can see it against all the white here. If you look at me, you will see a triangle. So that's kind of what you're looking for. So this is how I explain it when kids come to me for handwriting sessions. I always try to sit opposite them. And this is what they need to see when they're looking at me. Then your book needs to be turned. So that is quite an important thing as well. And um, if your book is not turned, what happens is, <clears throat> okay, so let me first show you how it should be. Here's me writing, <coughs> book nice and turned, nice and comfortable. So my hand actually looks comfortable. My arm looks comfortable. If I let go of the pen, the pen would lie in line with my arm. Okay, that's what you're looking for. There's my triangle. The corner of my book. So this is also quite important. If we look, if you turn this down here, you can see um, there's my, my laptop. So you can see is a straight line and straight line of my desk. Here's my book turned. Look at where the corner is. So I, I flipped my book um, backwards like this. The top page, the top corner of the page that you are writing on. So if you're writing on this page, the top corner of the page needs to kind of be up there somewhere. The bottom corner. So now here's the center of my body. The bottom corner as a right-handed person needs to be about 10 to 15 centimeters this way to the right. So that's my book sitting nice and comfortably. And um, there's the middle of my body. I'm gonna actually just put this green pen here. There's the center of my body. So on kids, when they're small kids and I'm trying to get them to remember, I always say to them, um, you know, often they'll come to me and they're wearing a, um, a hoodie with a zip or they, if they're in a uniform, they've got buttons. Or you just say where your belly button is. That's the center of your body. Look down and your book corner of your book should be about there. If you're working on a book and you've got it like this and you're writing there, you don't go over here. You actually move your book so that the corner of the page that you're working on is over here. So whatever page you're on, you want that page in front of you. If you're working here and you've got this one open, you would keep the corner of the book there and it's a little bit to the right. For a left-handed person, you just flip all of that over. Book sits here, hand is there. There's the corner, here's the um, center of the body. And then I would write over here as a left hand person. And you look and it's almost a mirror, Im or it should be a mirror image of um, left and right. So when I've had little kids coming to me, like grade one kids and they're left hand and the parents are very worried that they are going to pick up bad habits. And I start them writing like this. And you look quickly, you would not actually realize that you're watching a left handed person if they write like this. There's no need for all of this. That is from being taught incorrectly and not being allowed to turn the book and not being taught to, to move the hand like this. So if I was writing left-handed, all my, my finger movement is there, I've got nice space, uh, I'm not smudging over my ink, there's no need for that either, your ink is sitting above you. So for a left-handed person, if you start them off correctly, there shouldn't be any, any trauma, because <laughs> okay. lefties are showing around there, the ones that aren't taught properly, I have a lot of them coming to me, and there's always, um, there are always issues, and they often are, They've been shouted at by teachers and moaned at and oh, they're all sorts of problems. So, so that shouldn't be an issue at all. When it comes to your pencil grip, how tightly you grip, okay? I'm going to uh, show you with pencils, normal pencils. I've got all my pencils here that I work with the kids with. You get lots of different kinds, okay? Um, pencils, pens, there's all sorts of fancy grips that you get. Oh, there's so many different things on the market. A lot of times it's very confusing. So parents and teachers will often not know exactly where to go for pencil grips. Um, you get grips that fit over the pencil. So you get these grips 
um, like this one, where it actually fits over the pencil. It's like a little rubbery um, grip like this. Those are quite nice, but the problem with any of these things, so you could have the fanciest rubbery grips, you could have triangle, here's a pen that's got a triangular shape to it. You get fancy, uh, like my um, writing pen is a lamy, it's cut for the fingers, it's all fancy. All these things are set up to help you. But if you still grip too tightly and you're crushing the life out of the pen, <laughs> none of that's going to make any difference. You're actually going to end up with all the problems, I have kids coming to me, they grip straight over the pencil grip with two fingers here, all wrong, or they even just hold right over it. It's like, great, I have a pencil grip, I'm holding it, <laughs> and it's making no difference because they still don't understand about not gripping too tightly. So that is still an issue. So the first thing that I always check for, and the first thing anyone should check for is how tightly are you holding the pencil? So that's like a weird one. Like why would that matter? Okay. So if I was gripping my pencil, um, I'm going to just use a pen just to show you. If I was gripping too tightly, even if I have what's known as the perfect tripod grip, one, two, three, you think of a tripod, um, like a camera tripod, it's got three legs. So that's where that's coming from. These two fingers should be underneath there. Even if I'm holding correctly, like technically correctly, if I grip so tightly, I don't know if you can see here, my fingers going white on the end, there's a problem. So I might have what's considered the perfect grip, but by the time I've crushed that pencil and I've got all this tension here and I write half a page, I'm gonna be exhausted. My whole arm is gonna be tired, my hands will be tired. Often with kids I'll ask them, or eat with adults as well, where do you get pain and cramps? And they'll say in here. It's like not a specific place, it's kind of like in the palm. And that is from being tensed up. So I know in the, um, email when I sent you all the link, um, I said, just have a pencil and a pen and a paper with you. So if you want to go through this with me and actually feel what it feels like to do all these things, it, it helps you because if it's you yourself that is having a problem, you'll understand the issues. If it's your child and you know what to look for, it also helps because then you know, is there a problem or isn't there? And a lot of the time there actually is an issue. So First thing we're looking for is that the fingers are not going white on the end. When I do that, I can feel all the tension through my arm, through my hand, through my wrist, into here. Completely tensed up. It's kind of like trying to drive and you're driving and you're holding the steering wheel or you're stirring your, your cup of tea and you're gripping the spoon and you stir. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> You're not going to do that. But we do that with our pens and we grip on so, so, so tightly. So whether you have the perfect grip or not is actually relevant at that point. It would probably be better to write with the incorrect grip, but looser because you're not having cramps, but I'll get to that grip now. Why I think this happens is, this is my theory and it's based on working in preschools, working with kids of all ages and actually watching what goes on with those kids and then asking them questions. So my theory on this, and I've bought my crayons I got proper, proper little wax crowns here. I bought those to show you. Here is my theory on this. And when I talk to people about it, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. When you look at a crown, this one has no point because I think this was the favorite one. These are ones I use for very small kids when they come to me. And I think from drawing the sky, they always color that one flat. So these ones are fairly new and I don't use them often because I don't often get small kids coming. But if you look at the crowns, the, um, and you think about back to preschool, Okay, the crowns are all this long. The best colors are always completely flat on the end, no paper. So these pens are actually in pretty good, these crowns are in pretty good condition. You can tell the favorite color. <laughs> Here's the least favorite color, it still has its point. Um, these ones are, um, they've never been into a preschool. They are like in pretty good condition considering. However, crown is normally about that long, no paper, very rounded on the end, and completely smooth from kids drawing with it, okay? They're always, and I'm generalizing, but I think it's pretty much always, they're always in a little two liter ice cream container and they're in the middle of the table. There's about six kids around the table. Everybody wants the best colors. Nobody wants the brown, or the, <laughs> unless you drink cheese. <coughs> Everyone wants the red or the pink or the best colors. So if you think about this, like, oh yeah, I'm kind of remembering back to those days. And if you ever go into a preschool, you will see it. it's like crazy chaos. Um, 
so now you don't have this lovely point to work with and the little lines and everything to tell you, oh, that's where I should hold the crown, all nice. No, you've got this short fat, this is still quite a good point <laughs> compared to some of these crowns. But imagine now you've got this little tiny hand, my hand's huge compared, a little tiny preschool hand that's probably only about this size. And if you work with small kids, you'll know what I mean. Little tiny hand. They're so eager. They're not waiting for someone to say to them, okay, now take this color and then draw. They are into those crowns. They're drawing, they're coloring. Um, it's crazy. It's a free for all. So they will grab that crown. And I know because I've worked in those classes. Straight away, hold the crown and now their hands are slipping. Okay. So we start our kids off in school in January in South Africa. It's hot. Those crowns are hot. They're slippery. The hands are slipping. They want to draw. So what happens? Think about it logically. You cannot hold nice. You also no one's told you when you're three or four to hold like this. You just grab. If it's not the fist grip, it's kind of like however. You literally grip onto that crown and then you start drawing. Now in your head, you're thinking, oh, I've got, I can hold the crown. Maybe your fingers are slipping. So you hold tighter to stop the slipping. What happens? That imprints. And your brain is like, oh, okay, that's what we do. Now you're not four anymore. You're now 44 <laughs> or you're 14 or whatever it is. And now you have to write something. What happens? The brain is not like, oh, hold on a second. We're now holding a fancy lamy fountain pen. We don't hold like this anymore. We now have to hold correctly. No one tells you that stuff. You just end up, instead of holding like this, you still hold exactly the way you hold that crown. The whole thing with handwriting coaching, what I do is I undo that. So I take the, and if you want the technical term, you are rewiring the neural pathway. So the neural pathway going from the hand that's saying, okay, the hand's feeling like it's got control up to the brain. The brain's like, okay, got it. That's what we do. Um, so every single time you pick up anything, could be one of these, could be a fancy calligraphy pen, could be any pen, doesn't matter. The brain and the hand are like, oh yeah, guys, remember, that's what we do. We hold tightly we hold like this or we hold low down that's the other thing i see a lot people hold too low okay so that is my feeling on that it's it's coming from when we're very very small and the other problem is often you're not writing at that point you are drawing so no one's really bothering it's like you go to preschool draw a picture of your mom draw a picture of your dad you know and you're just drawing away <laughs> doesn't matter how you're holding nobody's worrying at that point because it's preschool and it's like you know as long as you can draw, they're so concerned, like, are you drawing? Are you actually participating in the class? They're not really worried about, are you holding correctly? And a lot of the time, kids are switching between the fist grip and, and some kind of sort of normal grip. And often they're switching hands. There's a lot of that kind of thing um, going on when they're small. So the focus is not too much on how tightly they're holding. So I'm not saying that at this point when they're little, they should be holding absolutely perfectly and perfect everything. It's more about how tight are they holding? And when I first realized that overly tight grip is a problem was actually in a preschool. I was, I don't often work with preschool kids, but I was doing work, um, it was actually here in Alex, near, near to me in Santon. I was in um, one of the preschools in Alex and I had all these little kids working, drawing, and I was doing work with the teachers. These were kids that were going into um, grade one the following year. And what I realized is one of the little girls she was holding the crown so tightly and I still remember this moment it was like for me it was just such a um a breakthrough moment she was holding I think holding like this something oh she was holding in a weird way and I said to her okay just let go of the crown and I was trying to move her fingers so that I could put them into a better position it was like a vice grip I sat there and her hand her little fingers were only this big I mean she was about five or six I couldn't get her fingers off it was like like a vice <laughs> I said, I couldn't move her fingers. This unbelievably tight vice grip in this little kid and this cute little tiny girl with this ridiculously tight grip. So then I said to her, okay, we'll put the crown down. Let's loosen the fingers. So then I started doing it with all the kids. And then a lot of them were shaking. I said, right, let's shake our hands. Let's make our hands nice and loose. And they're shaking some of them like this. Some of them couldn't shake. They didn't actually, I said, okay. Now pretend you've walked through a spider web. You've got a spider web on your hand. Now you've got to get that off. And okay, then they started. <laughs> but my point is so many of these little kids, and I've seen it over and over since that moment, so many of them are um, gripping really, really tightly. And that carries right through into um, adulthood. 
because you don't actually realize that you're doing something wrong. It's like you, you walk a certain way or you do something a certain way. Unless someone points it out, you don't always realize that maybe you're doing something differently or incorrectly or there's a better way. So that was um, kind of a breakthrough moment. And from then, I started looking at how tightly other people were holding. So um, my calligraphy students, brush lettering students, handwriting students. And what I started realizing is that it is a huge, huge issue. And even, as I said, even with the correct, perfect grip, holding too tight is a problem because what it does is it completely compromises that hand. You're in a completely tense position all the time. Now you're expecting this hand to do letter formation that those fingers can't move because they're so rigid and they're so tight. So you're wanting to loosen that up. So one of the things I do in the, in the handwriting coaching sessions is I get kids to scribble and I actually oh, say kids, adults, adults are scribble too. And it's always funny. And I've had, I've had doctors, I've had high court judges, I've had teachers, I've had oh, all sorts of people, businessmen, I've had psychologists, I had a lot of people from different walks of life. And a lot of them are professional people and they are embarrassed about their writing. And then you give them a book and you say, okay, we're going to scribble. And then they have to choose one of the pencils. And <laughs> my pencils are all aimed for kids, <laughs> kid for kids. So they, they get a pencil and they have to scribble. And the funniest thing is to watch an adult actually scribble because we don't do that. You know, we would talk, don't scribble in the book. And, and, and to get the hand to actually play and have fun and to kind of be aware of what is actually going on here. Why am I holding so tightly? And is it necessary? And it's absolutely not necessary. It's just something that we, we do. So when you are um, holding too tight, I'm going to move this, this camera around now. Just um, here's my, my tripod. I'm going to move it around so that I can show you um, the different grips. And I'm going to show you from above here. So when I say scribble, okay, I'm just get a clean page here. I really mean scribble, like loosely, lightly on the page. So people who, who grip very tightly, what I'll say to them is loosen the pencil, go through the motion of scribbling lightly, even to the point where your hand is so loose that your pencil kind of falls out of the hand, then grip tightly, feel how that feels, then grip loosely. So you can take your pencil and scribble, just try that, hold your pencil, see how tightly, don't worry if your grip is like this, it doesn't matter at this stage, um, just move the pencil on your paper and try using a pencil, not a pen, because it's easier. Feel how tight you're holding. And often what happens is you actually don't realize that you're gripping so tightly that something like scribbling is unpleasant. And people will do these tiny little, <laughs> little cramped up scribbles. Then I'll say to them, no, scribble big. Go over the whole page, take up the whole page. And it's almost as if the hand has not got permission to do that. You know, when you're a small kid, you give a small child, like a five-year-old, a crayon or a pencil. The first thing they do is this, okay? <laughs> you give an older child or an adult the same pencil and they're almost embarrassed to, to make a mess on the page. And I think part of that comes from, um, you know, this thing of us needing to do everything perfectly. It's such a bad, that is an epidemic, the need for perfection. But that's another, <laughs> another whole class. But to actually move your pen around and be aware of what is happening, never mind the pencil, what is happening in the hand from there up, what is actually happening? Be aware of that. Feel in your hand, am I tight? Am I loose? Why am I tight? And often the, the tightness comes from um, when you're small. It's nothing to do with anxiety. I think anxiety makes it worse, but it's not something that you will have um, that is worse because you're an anxious person. Lots of people who are very relaxed and very chill will write very, very um, grip very tightly. And I do think it's coming from when you're small. So if you feel how that feels, just be aware of that. And also look at your um, where you're holding your pencil. So you're wanting to hold, if it's a pencil like this, um, or if it's a clutch pencil, you would want to hold about there. So I would say on the paint, you're wanting about a centimeter of space. It's in total about two centimeters. I don't have the biggest hands, so I'd say two centimeters. If you have slightly bigger hands, like my high school boys and when I have men coming, they would normally hold about maybe two and a half centimeters, simply because you need more space in the hand. So your, your pencil needs to be um, higher up of the, you know, your, your hand must be higher up on the pencil. Then you want, so you're wanting that, you do not want to be on top of the pencil. So what I do with my smaller kids is I will actually draw faces on the pencils. So here is a pencil. I'm just going to take its grip off. It, this is the one I had the grip on. This one has a face on it. 
And I'll draw faces on the pencil. So when a child is looking down and they're looking at the pencil, it is their job, this is for the small kids, it's their job to remember not to crush the pencil so tightly that it <laughs> stops smiling. You want happy pencils, okay? Loose, loose grip. And there needs to be a happy medium between overly tight and overly loose. So it's kind of like when you're stirring a cup of tea and you're, you're holding the, um, the teaspoon, but you're not crushing the life out of the teaspoon and you're not dropping it into the cup. So it's to find that balance. You want to be engaged in your hand without being overly tensed. So, so you're wanting to not have these white, white, white fingers. Um, and you'll see where the nail bed goes white. Okay, I, I, obviously I am white. I'll sometimes have kids, I, I often have a lot of uh, black and Indian kids and they'll look at me and they'll say, yeah, but your hat, you are white. So obviously, <laughs> guys, look at your own hand. You, I, you, you can have the darker skin. You are going to see white patches, I promise you. You are looking for nail bed being white and, and around here where you're cutting off the supply. And that's what you don't want. I don't care what color your hand is. That is too tight. But it's so funny with these little kids and they look at their hands and suddenly for the first time, they're actually seeing their hand. So, um, and when you have an adult, often you find with the adults, because their hands are, um, are bigger, um, you know, you'll find that they are um, holding high enough up, but the tightness is still there. Then you get pens like this one. This is the Lamy pen. It is cut for your fingers. So it actually has these grooves. You can see there, the grooves are cut for your fingers, <clears throat> where you are literally being told by the manufacturers that is where your fingers need to go. I will still have people coming. I use these pens for um, calligraphy classes. They will put their fingers down here and they will put their, their middle finger underneath here and hold so low that these pens, it's a fountain pen, this pen will ink on your fingers. You will literally have ink everywhere. That pen is telling you, put the fingers there. So when you look at these pens together, there is a gel pen, there is a pencil, um, and here is a clutch pencil. <coughs> so you've now got four pencil, four writing implements over here. Um, I'm saying to you about there is where you want to hold. If you look at this Lamy pen, it's cut over there. These ones, the, the gel pens where you've got these little grooves, I'll normally tell people, have about two of these um, little grooves, these little lines sticking out. So when you're holding, you would see about two of those lines. You get the ones with the wavy lines as well. Um, I don't, I do have one. This one has, this is the um, Pentel. This is the Pilot. They're just different, um, different brands. They all have these little grooves. So you're wanting about two of these little um, stripes showing, the same with these wavy lines, about two of those showing. And then on a clutch pencil, you kind of want to be about there. But if you look at this pen that's cut, put your fingers in exactly the same place. So there is a, definitely a correct place to hold and an incorrect place to hold. The incorrect would be too high. I often, um, I don't often see that where people hold too high. Most of the time they're holding too low. A lot of times what happens is the grip is so compromised, they will hold with two fingers and pinch the, the pencil there. This finger is pulled in here and these ones are curled right inside there. And then you've got this kind of thing happening. That middle finger is sitting so high up that you have to grip tightly in order to hold the pen. So that is, is a very compromised grip. In this case, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get these fingers to move out. You can put some um, tissue paper, like a ball of tissue paper in there and we get the hand to work like this. You're wanting to see sort of a gradual, like um, almost like steps, one, two, three, four, that the fingers are like this. Quite a difficult thing to achieve, especially with people who struggle with their, um, their like the tightness is there, or they've got a very awkward, um, you know, some people have quite awkward, like their fingers are quite awkward. So it, they struggle to get that grip right. So this is the correct grip, three fingers like this, tripod grip and the two fingers sitting underneath there, holding up the grip. So when you look from the front, I'm just going to turn this camera over here. When you look from um, the front, that is what you're wanting to see. So thumb and forefinger are on the top. This middle finger is sitting underneath. So that's the tripod grip like that. These two fingers are sitting underneath. And then from the side, that's what you're seeing. Nice, comfortable space. But look how much space I have in my hand. So when I get a, a person coming to me and the first thing I see is this, then I know that that's tight. So if you're holding your pencil and you hold like this, even if you hold with two fingers on top, 
Try pulling this, these fingers inside and see how uncomfortable that feels. You have, look at my hand, it's split. You can actually see the grip is split. Even with the middle finger underneath. So even if that part is, the, the three fingers are correct. When I pull these fingers in here, I've compromised their grip. So I will sometimes see from that side, I'll see this kind of split. When I was talking about the steps, which should be like, a, you have the split over there. And from the front, it looks correct until you look over here and you see these fingers pull right inside like that, right inside. And what that does is it creates a very uncomfortable um, way of writing. So for me to write in my correct way, where I normally write, if I hold my paper like this, here's me writing. I'm not going to actually write, I'm just going to scribble. Here's me writing comfortably. Look at my fingers, I can move them up and down nicely. So then you can do correct letter formation. That's my hand like this, nice and comfy. As soon as I pull these two fingers right in, now I've still got my fingers on the pencil correctly, but there's no support underneath. So now I have to grip tighter. So when you pull these two fingers in, it almost forces you to hold tighter because there's no support under the middle finger. So it forces you to grip tighter and you kind of lose that flexibility because now you focus on trying not to drop that pencil. And the fingers, when you bring them back here, these three on the top can actually relax a bit because they've got these two underneath. So that's something that I see often and you should be able to see through the hand. So if you look there, you can actually see my page through my hand. If I do that with the fingers, it's very cramped up. And look how these, these fingers almost pull in like that because I've cramped up the whole grip. So it's a very uncomfortable way of writing. And look how pointy my thumb is and look how pointy my, my index finger are. As if I bring the hand out again, relax, I'm relaxed. I pull them in, you can see they almost go white, like their thumb looks so uncomfortable and so unhappy. Um, very hard to write. And look how, how pulled in my pencil is. Also, my pencil is standing up um, on its point. Hang on, let me just move this cable. The pencil is standing up. If I'm holding like this and I pull in, the pencil kind of pulls up on its point like that. So now I'm holding the pencil, pulling up like this, trying to write. I can't see what I'm doing. If I look down, I've put this camera right in front of my own face. So as I'm looking at my own hand, I can't see my pencil because my thumb is in the way. And look how low I'm holding. Now I have to turn my head to the side. So first of all, instead of writing um, <clears throat> comfortably, I have to pull my head. You can't see my head moving, but I'm having to move my head to the side so that I can actually see the, what's going on in the pencil. So that's a problem. If you're wanting to, um, to correct that, you just need to pull these fingers out and relax the hand. Okay, but that's, yeah, that's one of the main things I see um, with the kids that come to me. Another issue is the two fingers sitting on top. Okay, so where you're writing um, like this, two fingers on top, lots and lots of kids do that. The variations I see of that are the finger called around here. So I often see that finger sitting there. It's almost like the finger doesn't, the index finger doesn't really know where to go. So it's like, I'll just sit up here and do nothing. I mean, that is the weirdest script. The first time I ever saw this, I couldn't believe what I'm seeing. And I now see it a lot. And um, the finger curls around here. This finger, the middle finger, is doing all the work. But look at this. I have no flexibility. It's literally, and this one's just chilling on the top. It is doing nothing. Sometimes I'll even have the ring finger on the top and then little pinky fingers all on its own down there. I don't often see that though. Most of the time it's this. And then what happens is on the um, ring finger, you get this callus over here. So I see a lot of that with um, kids that are coming with a, a callus here. I don't often see that in adults. It's almost as if this has become a sort of more popular style with, um, with kids at school now. But you've got no space to move. And then everything is rigid and tight. So when you do this, your middle finger takes over everything's being pulled here. So hold your pen, take your pencil in your hand or your pen. Instead of holding in the normal tripod grip, take this finger, move it on top and then see what happens. You actually struggle to get flexibility as opposed to this where the middle finger is underneath and I've got lots and lots of space. So when you hold with the second finger on top, the middle finger, you limit your flexibility. The other problem here is that you have your three strongest fingers. And if I ask kids, when I have little kids coming to you, I'll, put, I'll say, put your hand out, show me your strongest fingers. They'll always point to um, the thumb. It's like your next strongest finger and it'll be a toss up between these two over here. Which are your weakest fingers? Always this one over here. Next weakest is that one. So now if you think about holding the pencil, 
if I hold like this, I've got these two underneath here, support act over here, strong, 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 nice um, balanced out grip. As soon as I take this third finger, which is also a strong one, and I put it on top, all the strength and all the force is on the top, pushing down, okay? So my poor pencil is being ground into the page, forcing the page. So that's a huge problem I see is, is um, when they're writing kids and adults, adults do it as well a lot, pressing too hard and you feel it through the page. Sometimes I'll have it going through um, three or four of these pages. This is a normal school book. It'll actually go through that many pages. When you have all three of your fingers, uh, and I'm counting the thumb as a finger here, of your strongest fingers on the top forcing down, these two are sitting under here. There's no, <laughs> they're totally unprotected here. There's nothing to push back. So all the force is down. That is exhausting. Now you're writing like this the whole time, forcing the hand down. This finger here is stopping your flexibility. So, because um, remember what I said, if you put that there, you've got flexibility, put it on top, not so much flexibility. And you're forcing everything down into the, um, the little index for the ring finger. Often what happens is that finger gets very, very sore and kids will say it's uncomfortable, it's sore. When they're holding with this middle finger here, one of the very common complaints that I have from kids is that it's sore on the top, not on the bottom. If it's the bottom, people worry about carpal tunnel. It's not happening over here. It is actually on the top. And it's this um, band over here. If you go and look at anatomy of the hand and you look at the ligaments and that, all the ligaments are coming out and there's a band on the top. And it seems to be that I'm not sure exactly, but it feels to me like that band is getting inflamed from all this, this tension and pressure going on in the hand. Um, and if you can move this finger down here, then it helps. Then you've got space. Your letter formation is suddenly much better. So when you go from holding with two fingers up top there and you move to here, often people then think, oh, but then my child should write perfectly. I, yeah, except that for all the years and adults, um, you've been writing your A's like this, like that open at the top. You're doing your, um, your G's like this, or flicking the tails down like that. I see a lot of that. Let me just switch to pen so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, uh, find a dark pen. You'll see the tails flicking out like that. Also, when your book is dead straight and you hold like this, watch what happens to my hand. I have to hold, and I'm going to move this out. I have to hold um, sideways like this. If I'm holding like this, I cannot hold comfortably this way, which is how I want to hold because my lines are there. So either I do this or I have to go sideways writing like this. And you end up with this very kind of flicked look because if, so if you normally write with your book turned and you write like this, take your book, put it straight and try and write. And your hand actually doesn't know where to go. If you're used to writing like this, your hand is kind of going, mm, okay, I'm gonna try and go sideways. What happens? All your tails start to flick. So I will see tails doing this because now they're flicking out. I will see S's doing this kind of like um, lightning bolts because you can't do an S. If you're doing an S like this normally, okay, you can't really do it when your book is straight because now you're having to push. So it's push, pull, push. That's kind of uncomfortable. So kids will often just resort to this and they're kind of doing that shape. The A's that are open, same story. They're starting at the top when the book is, is sideways, uh, is straight like this. Much easier to just kind of drop down and do that. So now I'll ask them, is it an A? Is it a U? Um, <laughs> oh, my teacher can read my writing, don't worry. Like, yeah, okay, so now you get to matric and you have an ID, matric ID number. No teacher that's ever seen you is marking your work. Nobody knows who you are. What is that? And that's when the kids start to realize, oh, okay, there's a problem. Often with adults, they're writing so fast, taking notes. And, and I find a lot of the time, because we don't write anymore, you, you hardly ever write, that when you do have to write, your hand is kind of out of practice. And now you've got all these funny shaped letters. And trying to do your, um, your A, you have to actually start here, go round, push out, come round, go up, go down. That's a circular move. Look at this hand moving around to do that letter. When it's tight and it's sideways, that's uncomfortable. That's a mission to try and do this. Okay, much easier to sort of do that <laughs> and this. And I see these tails, all these tails doing that. It is the sideways flicking motion, okay? 
Um, I'm just going to move this out a bit so you can see my hand properly. So when you are writing with your book straight and your hand sideways, all your letter formation goes out. The ones that I see the most are the A's that look like U's, the um, R's that look like that. They're all like this. And um, the Y's and the G's that kind of do that. And often it's a case of which is that? Is it a Y? Is it a G? And then they'll go back and say, oh, no, that's meant to be a G and put the top on. So I teach letter formation as well, because once you've undone all of this and the hand is now relaxed and moving and you've got flexibility, they're still writing like this because that is, is what is, um, it's become the habit. And the muscle memory is there to do the letters like this. So then it's a matter of teaching all these shapes again. So that's something else I do in handwriting coaching is to, to undo the hand, like the tightness, get the um, finger, um, the grip correct, and then to actually go through the letters. So usually it takes about a lesson or two to get the hand um, nice and loose and relaxed. We can normally fix that in one lesson, depending on the child, sometimes two lessons. But then, um, then what happens is they'll write like this still. So now they turn their book <clears throat> and they've got their hand here and the pen is nice and relaxed, but the letters all look like that still. So you actually need to reteach um, how to do those letters. And then I teach about letter families, how the A, the D, the G, and the Q are all a family, N, M, H, R, they're a family. So, and so it goes. So I actually I take the, the alphabet, break it up into families. I do the same when I teach cursive because cursive is also a big issue with, um, with a lot of kids because they're being taught cursive, but they're having their book straight and their hand here. So now take your book, your paper, put it straight, hold like this and try and do cursive and tell me that that's easy. If you try and do something like cat, now I'm going to go C and I'm sideways. I mean, that feels so uncomfortable going like this. I'm almost writing like a, like a left-handed person would write this way. I'm seeing that with these kids. They're writing and then it's two fingers here. And then one finger is often right down there. Okay, So the finger will be right down there on the, um, on the pen. And it's a case of like this. Now they're trying to do, you can't even see my pen because I'm so cramped up. It's a case of trying to write and you've got this cramped up. I'm turning it sideways so you can see. Look at this. There's no way that that pen's, and you pull the fingers in. So let's compromise that hand completely. <laughs> That's what happens. There's no chance for cursive. So schools will say, oh no, cursive's too hard. We're not doing cursive anymore. Kids are struggling. This is why they're struggling because they're not taught turn your book and flow this way. Cursive is meant to flow that way. And we're making our kids do it this way and not looking at what's going on in their hand. So um, other grips, weird grips that I see with in combination with the um, straight book is um, the thumb wrap. So when the thumb wraps, same story, even if you have this middle finger underneath, if the thumb wraps, it, there's no movement. I've literally got no flexibility. So my poor hand can't move the pen. Pen's stuck in this crazy tight grip and there's no flexibility. So you have to involve the entire hand. Look how exhausting that looks. Entire hands moving. The other thing I see often, um, which you can look for if you're not sure, is this here. So, um, so watch my wrist. Oh, let me just get that right. So here's my hand sideways and so I just want to zoom that out a bit there if I'm holding like this and sideways look what happens to my arm can you see it lifting I can't point because I'm holding the camera here. my arm is actually lifting up and I see that quite often and when you do that and you're writing sideways maybe you're writing fine over here but look at that arm now I'm completely twisted here and that's not comfortable and kids will often complain and they'll say I'm going to try point here they'll say I get pain down there in my arm the other issue is when you're writing um, sideways with your book straight. Let me actually put this back up here. So I go, it's quite hard to do this with a camera. I need a second, a second person to hold the camera. So here's me sitting and here's me sitting with my book straight. Okay. Now, remember, I write this way like this. Look at my wrist. Nice and straight, nice and relaxed. Now, when I turn my book straight, which is what we're teaching our kids, I can't do that. I have to write sideways. And if I put this finger here and I wrap that thumb, look what happens to my wrist. It does that, okay? Let me just move this up so you can see. It actually does that. Completely compromised over here. I'm guessing as well that that is why kids will often have pain on top here. The wrist, this band over here, and they'll say it is across the top there. They also get pain in the joints. And I'm saying, kids, this is something that adults get as well. They will get pain in the joints 
when I ask someone, where is your hand sore? And they point to um, a specific joint. With that thumb, if you imagine now, I'm, I'm gonna use my left hand just so I can point properly. If you imagine I'm holding like this with a very compromised um, grip. So then what happens is you will hold like this, thumb across there, you're writing, 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 but look at this thumb, completely rigid and completely straight across there. That thumb wrap is something that happens a lot and you'll often see that. Now my pen is also pulled right in here. I've got zero flexibility because I literally am stopping, the thumb is like a seatbelt across it, stopping that pen from moving, like a very tight seatbelt. And now I can't, I can't go anywhere. And then if I add in the straight block and the curved wrist, I'm, like I'm doing it left-handed, but just so I can point properly here. That whole thing, look at that. You can actually see the curve there. It's completely uncomfortable and completely um, compromised like that. And look where my pen's pointing, away from me. So what you're wanting, and this doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed, turn the book, pen pointing past the shoulder, don't forget the triangle, and that's what you're looking for. Much easier to say do that than to actually do it. And that's where the handwriting coaching comes in, that I will sit and I'll actually go through all of this with kids and with adults. With an adult, usually one or two lessons. With older high school kids, one to two lessons, sometimes three, and you've pretty much fixed everything. With younger kids, it often will take a little bit longer. Um, and it's just to sort that out. With the younger kids, and I'm talking about most of the primary school kids up until um, sort of the end of primary school. Usually by grade seven, they're um, able to do it quicker, but a lot of the younger kids need more lessons and it's to keep, it's to reinforce that and it's to, to get that straight wrist and get the hand move. Also, I'm higher up on the pen, I'm not right down here because now look if I'm right down here and I'm trying to, and I'm trying to write like this, there's no way that you can get your letter formation nice. You're writing tiny, you're also having to turn your head sideways so you can see what you're doing past your thumb and the whole thing's a disaster. So with handwriting coaching, um, a lot of times people will uh, come to me or message me. And sorry guys, I know this is going on longer than an hour. It's If you need to go, it's absolutely fine. I'm recording it so you can always catch the rest of it um, on YouTube. So I don't mind at all. <laughs> I wasn't sure how long this would take. Okay, I have a lot to say about it. But um, people often message me or come to me with their kids and say, oh, my child has dysgraphia. And dysgraphia is something that, um, you know, it's, we all know dyslexia. Everybody knows the term dyslexia. Dysgraphia is a writing issue. So dysgraphia, um, I went and I researched and I had a look and it's oh, every website you look at has got a different set of symptoms and it's got a different thing of, you know, some people say it's not curable. Some people say this is something you will always live with. The symptoms of dysgraphia are things like um, overly tight grip, writing all over the place, not being able to follow the margin. And I see that often where I'll have people writing, there's the margin and they'll start here and they'll write down like this, or they'll write all over the place. A lot of times what I find is that um, kids will come to me and specifically children where they've been told it's dysgraphia and usually the parents have just been told this, they've just given, been given a, um, a, a term. It's awareness. A lot of times I'll ask these kids, okay, but why are you writing away from the margin? Oh, I don't know. Um, and then we work on that, concentrate on that. And I've got kids to write next to the margin. Even if you write slightly away from the margin, that's fine, but you want it consistent. Um, things like writing where you've got the lines and they'll do everything off the line or it's uneven often it's awareness and sometimes it's because the hand's so compromised that they actually can't see where the point of because now you if you're holding like this you can't see your pen so they'll be holding like this it's so tight and so cramped up like this that they can't see the end of the pen so it's a case of well I'm just going to put the hand down and hope for the best <laughs> it doesn't work you have to know where the end of your pen is and you have to actually think about where is my point going on my page so that's something else that I work a lot with kids on is being aware and adults because adults are even worse we just dump the pen down and keep writing and i find as well with people who write too fast that is a huge problem because writing um too slow obviously when you're in school there's an issue with that you can't keep up so well and what i was saying in the beginning about uh, my son luke such a tight grip so slow and he wrote in print and laborious and every letter like this i mean it's just you're just thinking about it. It's like, oh my um, that is an issue. 
I find with those people, once you loosen up the hand, you get the pen grip right, that actually um, comes right. The speed, they can speed up fairly quickly. Someone who writes too fast, that is actually harder to fix, not for me, but for the person who writes too fast. Because when you write fast, it's like talking too fast. You now have to consciously slow down. And it's the same with writing. You put the pen down and you just kind of like this and you write and it's a bit like writing in a blur. Everything's kind of just like this. You lose definition. You don't see tails. You don't see tops. And that is something I see a lot of. And, and kids often, especially by high school, they will write super fast. And I find it with boys, especially with girls, they tend to still write slower or, or not even slow, just slower or like at a normal speed, because with girls, they will try and keep the letters neat because we are social, we girls are socialized to write neatly. It's not ladylike to have ugly handwriting. So we are socialized to take the pain, take the cramps, all of that at the cost of our hand so that our writing looks neat. Boys, however, it's like, oh no, this is sore, this is painful. I'm moving this hand, finger out the way. I'm just gonna write however to make the pain stop. And I'm going to get through this as quick as possible. And they end up speed writing across the page like this. And it happens in adulthood as well. And I find it happens where as well, where you've got people who write a lot for, the, for a living. So people who work in HR in meetings all the time, people who are, and these are just, um, you know, going from students that I've got, there's lots of careers where you write a lot, but um, doctors who haven't to write patient notes, psychologists, people like that, you're writing, writing, and you tend to just go fast, fast, fast. And you often can't read what you've written because it becomes this blur, like this <laughs> squiggle. To get someone like that to slow down and to write the same word cat, now you're going to go see and lift. And it is hard, 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 hard. And I just laugh the whole way because like, okay, I get to a point sometimes, I've had it with kids, primary school kids, where they write, they literally finish the one letter and they're jumping into the next one. And it's this flicking, blurry, horrible writing. Like, okay, write a letter and you're only allowed to write the next letter when I say go, go or whatever. And if you've ever um, seen someone learning to play the piano and they've got that metronome and it's like, tick, 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 it's that thing that makes the, the sound and it's so that you learn timing. I feel like you need one of those things for someone who writes fast because they actually physically cannot stop between each other. And I'm not talking about cursive. I'm talking about print. Write the C, lift, do the A, lift, do the T. And it's really difficult for those people. Once you get them to slow down, then you can get your letter formation working. But wow, it's, it's a problem because by then it's, it is like writing um, in a blur where you actually can't read what they've written and their hand kind of just goes into a, into this like a speed wobble. So I'm um, just coming back to dysgraphia. I, um, I feel like a lot of people, especially parents have been given this term. It's like, Oh, well, my child has dysgraphia. So that's why they can't write. But actually it's just a case of um, loosening the hand, turning the, the page, allowing the hand flexibility and allowing the hand to actually do what it's meant to do, which is if I was writing on glass, would be this, to be able to move and look at the space I have there, I can write. So when you compromise the hand and you've pulled it in and you've allowed it to do this and you've got it turned, um, <laughs> there's no way you can write. It's not possible that you can write nicely. Well, maybe, but um, for the average person, not. And then that affects things like um, drawing. So many people say, I can't draw. And then as soon as you kind of fix up the grip a bit and then they're able to, to draw, people will often, adults often say, oh, I also crochet and knit very tightly. And it's coming from this extremely tight, these tight, rigid um, hands. People find um, things like, like just drawing with a pencil almost impossible because it is almost impossible when you're holding like this and it's, it's just uncomfortable. So it's about fixing all of those things. And then I find often um, something like dysgraphia, which is this, this diagnosis, you know, where, where they say, oh, your child has that, it's, yeah, they have it. Or, okay, but let's try and undo it. I have yet to have a child who actually has dysgraphia come to me. Most of the time it's just overly tight grip. And sometimes they're just so over school. They are sick of school. They don't enjoy it. It's like, oh yeah, so they just write however. When you explain it to them and you actually make them accountable, and you explain to people how important neat handwriting, and I don't mean perfect handwriting, just mean legible handwriting, and how important it is that you as the person writing 
can actually write comfortably and nicely, then it's like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> and then suddenly it, it becomes something manageable. And I find with a lot of kids as well, and, and adults who had issues as children, they are feeling very disempowered. So you've taken away that child's ability to manage their own writing. They're just being told the whole time by teachers, by parents, by everybody, oh, your writing's messy. Oh, your, your um, grip is funny. Oh, you write ugly. Oh, you write weird. Oh, this, oh, that. What happens is that child internalizes all of that. And I see it when they are in high school. I see it with adults. It's this embarrassment of, oh, but my handwriting's messy. You know, oh, I don't have nice writing. Oh, I, you know, no one can read my writing. Like, but, but do you want to fix it? You, know, you can actually have nice writing. You can also change your writing. So if you don't like how your letters look, change them but you have to go slowly. If you don't like your G's, change the tail, go slow. It's like anything, it's a skill. You need to slow down and you need to focus on, um, on actually working on that skill. Um, in terms of when we teach our kids to write, sure, this is like a minefield. I have researched it, I've spoken to lots of teachers. As I said, I teach calligraphy, so I often have teachers coming to calligraphy classes. We get chatting. Um, I am not convinced that we are doing the right thing by starting our kids writing when they're very, very small. So if you look at a hand and you look at a small child's hand, I don't think, and this is based on what I've seen with the older kids, and um, I don't see it with adults. With the younger little kids, when they're three and four, I don't feel like the hands are um, formed. If you're looking at the bones and the, and the ligaments and the tendons and all of that, if you look at an extra of a, of a small child's hand, and you look at an x-ray, there was an x-ray going around on Facebook a while back, so you might have seen it. Um, those hands are quite soft and quite unformed when they're little. And then by about six or seven, it seems like the hands are much um, stronger or, or the bones are uh, and the ligaments and the cartilage, everything that you need to make your hand work, it's all kind of in place. When you're starting a child right too early, and I'm talking about three or four years old, and there are a lot of kids who will be started at those ages. Um, and there's a lot of pressure from parents on their kids and from schools. Some of the schools will pressure the kids and the parents to write earlier. I feel like what we're doing to our kids is we're forcing that little hand to do something that it's not ready to do. And why I'm saying that is I see so many children of about, so remember grade four is my most common age and I'm seeing kids Oh, like grade two, grade three, four, five, around those ages with this finger that bends completely. And I'm not talking about um, where a child is double jointed or it's hypermobility is the other term. We, I have had kids where they can move, it's freaky <laughs> for me, you can't do it. They'll move their finger and the joints can literally fold backwards and they can put their thumb over here. I mean, that's, I'm not talking about those kids. I'm talking about a child who's got a normal hand that doesn't bend in weird ways and that finger bends backwards like that and when they hold their pen I'll show you with the left hand when they hold their pen that finger joint is actually bending at a complete right angle and slipping down the pencil now tell me that that's normal when I'm seeing it again and again and again with kids in order to counter that what these kids are doing so now you can see my finger will not bend more than that okay and I've got quite flexible hands I've got strong flexible hands but that finger is not going to bend so my finger sitting nicely on the pencil um, and if you're looking from inside the grip, it doesn't slide too much. I've got control. There's my finger sitting nicely on the page, on the pencil. When you have a finger that bends completely, that finger's slipping. And I had one little boy say to me, I feel like I have no power in my finger. Like it's slipping down here. And he was grateful. Um, and a child who wanted to write nicely couldn't because he had to wrap this thumb around here to stop that finger from slipping down the page. What that does, it creates a lot of heat and um, tightness inside the hand. It makes the hand sweat. It slips more on the pencil. So I'm not sure if, um, if getting the kids to start writing properly, and I'm not talking about drawing and scribbling and circles and shapes. That I think is great. It's when you're forcing a child to write too early and the hand is not necessarily ready. So I'm not 100% sure, and I'm sure there are people who will disagree with me. I don't really see why we need our kids to write their names at four years old. I'm, I'm not convinced that that's the right thing. Um, the pressure on kids to perform is huge. 
they've got all the years of their life to write. But when you've got a child who's at school and they're getting them to write and you're possibly damaging that finger, um, that's a very hard thing to counter later on because that finger is going to stay in that position from what I've seen. And they have to bring the thumb around a little bit to stop it from slipping down. So now you're almost forcing that child into a compromised grip where their thumb is there and you've got lack of movement in there. So I'm not 100% sure that that's a good thing. When I was in school, long time ago, um, we were taught from, uh, mine was sub A, but that would be grade one. We were taught in grade one how to write. That's when we started writing. And before that, in preschool, it was drawing, it was coloring, it was uh, finger painting, it was picking up little things, uh, fuzzy felt, it was those pegboards, all the things to strengthen the fingers. I really think that is important when they're young. But this need to, to get them writing and doing letters, actual letters, there's so much pressure. And I do feel like that's also where this overly tight grip comes from. It's the pressure and the stress of trying to keep your, your hand, your little hand that's not formed properly and, and still quite soft in between the, the um, bones um, and the tendons and the cartilage. And you're asking that little hand to hold like this and to do um, a skill that it's probably not ready for. So I'm, you know... I have tried researching that. And when you go and Google, what age is the correct age for writing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, depending on, um, it's like trying to research dysgraphia. As a parent, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute minefield because everyone has a different opinion. So many times they'll say five years old is the right age. So I, I've seen, I've worked with five-year-olds and they are quite capable of writing. When you have a little child and they've got those little squidgy, soft little, I mean, those little cute chubby hands, I don't feel that that child is ready to, um, to write. I end up fixing all of that later on. So I see the, the end results. So, um, but that's something that, um, yeah, that's in our education system. I don't know how you would go about um, fixing that. And I probably am gonna upset some people <laughs> by saying that. But um, definitely when they're going from the fist grip, which would be this, that fist grip, and you're seeing kids drawing and they literally draw like that. At some point they start holding like that. When you start seeing your child wanting to hold this way, help them to get that middle finger underneath. Help them not to grip too tightly because when they grip tightly and it's sore and it's sore on that middle finger, that's when the finger ends up coming up here. And that's something that I see often. Um, so trying to keep the tripod grip is very important. And then if you're seeing any of these weird grips where the, the fingers are wrapping or you've got kids holding like that, I've had kids who write like this, not good. I've had kids who hold like this where the thumb is in the right place, but this finger is curled under here. And they're actually holding almost, there's kind of a fist, but instead of that, they're actually holding here. That I think is coming from, again, from trying to make it comfortable. So that is uncomfortable. This is much more comfortable, but extremely ineffective. And you're wanting that pencil to point back or the pen to point kind of this way. So you're wanting to have um, this nice flexibility. Okay. Um, the, yeah, that, that's kind of everything I need to say. I'm sure there's more, but I could be all day. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this because I spend a lot of my life undoing damage, not only in career grips, it's um, confidence. I've had kids arrive here to come for lessons. They get out the car, they're looking down, they can't make eye contact. They're so, um, they're so battered from just feeling like I'm completely useless. When my teacher said I'm this, my mom, you know, my parents said that. Um, and then, so what we do to our kids is we give them my pet hate, these pens, okay, I hate them, some people love them. This is the standard pen that is given to kids. All those click picks, those, um, those ones that have um, the see-through end, I don't have one here, but you know, the, the pen grip is molded in and it clicks, been around for a hundred years, so we'll give our kids those. Those are very thick to write with, these are very fine. Now we send our kids to private schools, we pay a fortune for fees, we give them the best of everything, we pay for extra maths, extra this, they go for cricket, for soccer, for all these things, we spend an absolute fortune on the right cricket bat, the right um, hockey stick, the right this, the right that, and this is what we give them to write with. And then we ask them to get A's and to have beautiful writing that looks like it's printed. I'm starting to wonder, like, is there something wrong with this? <laughs> If you give me this pen, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, stress about how I'm going to write because I've got to hold it up like this. It's scratchy. It's horrible. My writing's not the best, but it's it's legible and it's got a certain style to it because, you know, it's my own writing. I'm not talking about calligraphy, my own natural handwriting. These pens are the worst. 
some people love them but then if you give those people like a scratchy pen a thick pen that's rounded on the end like those big thick bics they can't write with those either so instead of spending time on with kids saying okay we'll try this pen try this pen um what do you think of this pen so i have a whole bunch of different pens so the first thing i ask them is right what pen do you write with i'll say this do you like it no okay try this one try this one so far the favorite has been this gel pen and i've worked with lots of kids hundreds of kids lots of adults and lots of um lots and lots of high school kids this is the pentel inner gel and this one is the pilot okay some schools do not allow gel pens if the school allows a gel pen this pentel inner gel is probably the best you can buy it in pna you can buy it in all the um, normal stationery shops it's not a difficult pen to find um, it says 07 on the end. That's quite important. I've by accident bought, um, I don't have one here, a 01, which is like a 10. It's very thick and very inky. And you also get a 05, which you don't often find. But the 07, and it comes in all different colors. So I have all the colors for these kids to mess around with. And they love these pens. The Pentel ones are um, better because the Pilot ones are also nice, but they're slightly, they're slightly more inky. So what happens when you've got a, a child writing on a normal school book? That paper's quite thin. I find these Pilot ones bleed a little bit through. The Pentel ones um, sometimes do, but it depends also how slow and how, how much time the, the nib stays in one place. So, but these pens definitely are the favorite if you're looking to change pens. Um, the pencil grips, these ones I find are the best. It's a small rubbery one. I normally give them to um, the kids that come here, the small kids. When you're holding um, a pencil like this, it's very hard to know where to put your fingers. And this goes for adults too. If you're struggling with going from this type of grip to that, one of these little um, pencil grips actually works quite well. But the small ones, you get those horrible triangle, those hard triangular ones, they are terrible. They're hard on the, on the kids' fingers. I hate them. I can't hold them nice in either very light grip. So these little rubbery ones are really nice. Um, you get all sorts of weird ones that are quite big and they have things that stick into the hand. Kids hate those. And the ones with the big flaps over it, they don't like those. A small one is good. And what it does is it just keeps the finger um, fingers like it. It's kind of like when you've got... Um, You've got a new pair of shoes and they're rubbing on and you put those gel insoles. It's kind of all those gel pieces. Women will know what I'm talking about. Um, those little rubber pieces that just uh, where your ankle, where your heel goes and where your toes go, you put them inside your shoe. It's, it has that effect where it feels nice. It positions the fingers properly, helps you to write. Just to get the initial um, uh, positioning and then you can move on to working without without that but these have this this um, grip and if you ever not sure look down from this end and that's what you want to see and you don't want to see a split and you want them to see a space like that okay all right um i've talked a lot <laughs> are there any questions if there's anyone still, <laughs> still on this lesson um i will send the recording so don't stress um any questions you're also welcome to whatsapp me i know it's, this is not an actual coaching session so if you feel that you or your child or someone you know has issues and you're not sure you're welcome to send me a photo of the grip or a short video of um maybe like five or ten seconds of them actually writing from those videos and pictures i will always be able to tell you um, what the issue is and how we go about fixing it so I, I, that's often the first thing i'll ask people to do if you're not sure and you think there's a problem, generally there's a problem. If you look at your child and you think, mm, something's not right, or, or they're tired and looks laborious and the pen's standing like this and that, or they're writing like that, that's the other grip that I sometimes see and it's kind of like this. If it looks weird and, and uncomfortable, I can pretty much guarantee that there's a problem. Quick fix, a um, couple of lessons, I do Zoom lessons as well. It's not something that is fixed by the teachers, mainly because they don't have time, not because they're not interested or they don't want to help your child. They are um, so snowed under with work and um, it's, and of course we're in the middle of yeah, <laughs> COVID. So I find with teachers often, um, the ones that do know that I do handwriting coaching, they will actually just say to the moms, please just phone Robin and uh, or WhatsApp Robin. Teachers don't have a chance to help all the kids, especially in the government schools where you're sitting with a really big class. It's impossible. If you've got 40 kids in your class and even half of them have got grip issues. That's 20 kids. How are you supposed to help them? them? So um, what I find is kids that come to me before, it's too much of a problem. Where you just start seeing maybe like grade one, grade two, or they're starting with cursive by about grade, I think it's last term of grade two. 
usually or in early grade three um, with the cursive often that's when it all falls apart because now this tight little hand suddenly can't do cursive so that's when it's also a good time to to um, get hold of me I don't believe in endless lessons and you also can't put my lessons through on medical aids <laughs> like you can with OT I don't believe in um, kids coming week after week after week after week. At some point, those kids need to be accountable. So when you've got a child and you say, right, here's how you hold, here's how loosely you hold, we work on that. By halfway through the lesson, they're already starting to feel more comfortable. And then you give them the tools and you show them, this is what you look for. Here's how you pick up your pen. I've got a special way of picking up the pen so that it's um, you're holding correctly. You give kids the... Um, you empower them, you give them the tools, and then they're able to actually go out and, and work on it themselves. So usually two to four lessons, and then often like a follow-up lesson. So often it'll be a case of you've had a month of holiday and they go back to school and it's all kind of going bad. And then maybe a little, um, what I'd call like a top-up lesson or maintenance lesson, you just get everything back on track. But this is not something that should be months and months and months of stress and expense and um, it's definitely something that you can fix at any age. I've had matric kids come to me with an in matric and they've got disastrous writing, disastrous grip. And they've been told you have to now do your exams typed. And that's a very, if you're not into that, it's a very horrible way of doing an exam. You've got to type everything or you have a scribe. You can't think, writing is, it's a, um, when you write, something happens where your brain, I don't know, like everything kind of flows. It's much easier to do your, your exams. So, it's not, um, it's not something that you need to fix when they're in grade three or grade four. It's, you can fix it at any age. And I've had my trick kids come to me and have two lessons and it's changed the entire, um, entire matric, basically, where they can suddenly write, it's comfortable, everything's legible, and the stress all goes away. So, um, yeah, so hopefully that's explained <laughs> a few things about grip and writing, why certain positions and hand positions are important. Um, if you ever try and do calligraphy of any kind, brush lettering, traditional calligraphy, and you've got a compromised grip, it's impossible. <laughs> so, and as I said, if you think there's a problem, there pretty much usually is a problem. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. Great, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. And I'm going to stop recording now, and then I'll upload this to, um, to YouTube if you do want to go and watch it again. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye.